Okay. Thank you. Uh, thanks, everybody. Good morning. Um, yes, I'm going to talk about uh, reusing editions data. And we have to uh, rearrange a bit the presentation because uh, of some last minute childcare issues. So my co-author is not with me, but he will be around uh, later today, probably tomorrow. So if you have more questions also, you can um, address him. Um, Sorry, I'm not used to the point. <laughs> so um, I'll uh, have a short introduction, and then I'm moving on to how to obtain the data, and then I'll present some um, some scenarios of how to reuse data from editions to arrive to uh, hope, hopefully to some conclusions. Um, so uh, using and reusing editions in uh, scientific research is not something new. For centuries, historians, literary scholars, uh, philosophers, and many others have built scholarship on top of uh, the editions of the sources they needed to access. Um, with digital editions and digital scholarship, something changed or may change. There is not only a scholar who um, uh, uh, look at the edition and write a book from the knowledge uh, she extracts from the edition, but there might also be a scholar who uh, writes some code, program a machine to uh, process the data of the edition, processing in the sense of um, transforming, analyzing, merging. And in this paper, uh, I will focus on uh, this last case, the machine actionable reuse, as opposed to human consumption. And I will only talk about the reuse of data, so not about the reuse of code or about the reuse of models. And to limit the scope of the paper, I'll uh, intentionally leave outside uh, many points related to research data management, which is one of the frameworks in which we can, um, that we can use to deal with this question of uh, data reuse. So questions such as licensing, versioning, formats, volume, but we can talk about them in the Q&A if you want. Uh, and in particular, uh, we will try to understand which mechanism the editor can use to enable and facilitate data reuse. And to answer this question, we look at how to obtain the data and then at some concrete reuse scenarios. Not sure we have a lot of time for the reuse scenarios, but I'll try. Uh, so how to obtain the data? Um, we, can, we might want to have to obtain the, the whole data set. And if uh, no access to the data is provided, we might consider web scraping. But much more common is that we have an accessible dump, mostly in um, XMLTI. Another possibility is, to, is that we want to retrieve only a selection of the data, and this is possible through APIs or through other query endpoints such as Sparkle. Um, and uh, in what follows, I'll focus on, on APIs. Um, an API or application programming interface is a mechanism that enables an application or a service to access data from another application or service. And um, APIs seem to be the future, but they have seemed to be the future already for some time. So if we look at articles already from the last decade, we see that uh, there were a lot, already a lot of talk about um, APIs. Um, in concrete, when we look at editions, um, there is still just a minority of them that provide an API for the user to retrieve the data. That also documents this API in the context of the editions. Um, so these are the ones I found based on the catalog of Greta Francini on the articles in the Rede journal, on some Twitter threads, and on direct and direct experiences. But if you have more, um, if you have more in mind, please, I would be very happy to know about. Um, and then there are some generic APIs for scholarly uh, editions, or that can be used, uh, that can be applied to scholarly editions. Such, and you are probably familiar with CTS, with DTS, uh, which is um, kind of an evolution of uh, CTS based on the on, on similar principles but broader in scope. Um, and you probably know about the uh, OAI, PMH, so metadata harvesting. This is not something for editions, but that could be applied for um, retrieving the metadata of the editions. And the TI Publisher API, which is more meant to build a TI Publisher edition than not to really uh, for the users to retrieve the data, but could also be used in that sense. 
uh, there are two that uh, I only recently discovered. The Event Search API is an ongoing effort. Probably someone in the audience knows more about it than uh, I do. Is an ongoing effort of the Austrian National Library, the pool of the library that works on on digital editions. And the idea is to make available the data from all their editions through this um, API that has uh, that is that focuses on events, and that each edition can describe what an event is. So, for instance, um, so for instance, in um, uh, in this this one, the diary of Okopenko. This is available uh, through this uh, event search API, and they decide that the event is the diary. So it's customizable for, by each project. And then the text API is, um, uh, is, also, is an effort of the Gottingen State and University Library and is inspired by um, AAAF and the uh, FLDR. And the main um, objects are collection, manifest, item, revision. So uh, it is not TI, but can, is not TI based, and they really say they don't want to do it. Um, and they have the reasons for doing that, but uh, it can be mapped to a TI edition. Um, so now I'm presenting some very boring tables, trying to summarize some results. Um, but of course, I'm going quickly because. Um, Otherwise, it would take ages. Um, so, as I said, there are editions, and then there are some of these generic APIs, and only a, a few editions use these uh, generic ones. Uh, we have at least three uh, that use DTS. Actually, here you don't have listed all the TI Publisher editions, but also TI Publisher includes DTS now. Uh, not, not the entire implementation, but uh, not up to the fragment, but up to a document. Um, and uh, in terms of documentation and testing, um, only three of them offer an open API um, documentation. And um, um, so open API is a specification for documenting uh, the API that makes it easier to understand how the API works both for humans and for machines and also is very um, practical because you can try, you can directly execute uh, queries and so see what, um, how it looks like. Um, and uh, in another case, there is some, some documentation and testing materials provided. In the case of the Registre de la Comédie Française, uh, they offer a Postman collection. So Postman is a, um, is a software for building and testing APIs, and uh, they offer this collection of requests that are ready that you, you can directly try. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, this we have seen. Uh, then, yeah, there are a variety of formats that, um, that, uh, for the, in which you can retrieve the data. There is, of course, a lot of TI uh, and uh, a lot of JSON. Um, there are some differences if you retrieve from the API, from the on-page download options, or from the data dump. And uh, <clears throat> there is still limited support for TXT and CSV. And those editions that provide the data in those formats make, it, make explicit that they do it because these are formats that are um, very useful for text and for doing text analysis and other kind of processing afterwards. But it's still a bit limited. And then something I found uh, quite interesting is um, what kind of endpoints this uh, API provide, what you can query. Um, and uh, in uh, most of the cases, you can query the content, and in some cases, you can query the structure. The stru uh, by querying the structure, I mean that you can query, for instance, um, the specific fragment, like you can do in DTS um, or uh, in TI Publisher. In some cases, la like the Kalmaria von Weber Gesamtausgabe, you can query, for instance, the TI elements. So uh, give me all the salute, the content of all the salute elements. Um, and um, uh, and in most of the cases, you can query by the content. And this is, of course, it depends on what kind of um, content the edition has. 
um, but there are some recurring elements. For instance, the possibility to query by um, author date, pla so places, uh, persons, uh, um, dates, and these kind of things. So my question would be, does it make sense to think about requests that are common to most editions? So this is a, more of an open question to the audience. Does it make sense to think about a standardization of APIs for edition, at least defining a minimal uh, set of, um, of uh, objects that might be retrieved from editions in terms of content? Because it seems that in terms of structure, we are already going into the direction of some standardization, at least with some of these generic APIs, and especially, I think, with DTS. Um, and then also something that is very practical is that some of these APIs allow you to, allow you to make queries uh, using external identifier. So for instance, I can ask, give me all the uh, letters. Um, for instance, if I use Coresp Search, the Coresp Search API, which of course is not exactly an addition, but uh, like an addition related project. Um, give me all the letters uh, where this person is mentioned. And uh, uh, I can use to say this person, I don't have to find what is the identifier that that particular project used for that person, but I can directly use the BIAF or the Gende or one of these um, authority um, uh, identifier. And so this makes uh, also much easier to retrieve data from multiple data sets because with just using just one identifier, I can say, okay, I want everything about this person from this and from that other case. We have one of our reusing scenarios, the one I should talk about later on, especially on this, so I won't, uh, I, I'll mention already now. Okay, so. Uh, moving to the reusing uh, data part, uh, where, where I am, uh, 34, I have 5, 10, 6, okay, thanks. Um, yes, so what do you want to reuse? Um, for instance, an edition is made, uh, well, we don't know exactly what an edition is made of, as we already just uh, explained us. Uh, this is an open question, we know. But let's assume that we have, or in some cases, we might have text and then we might want to reuse it for doing some text analysis or for doing a, um, a scholarly edition of a, of a larger corpus. Uh, we might have uh, archival documents, descriptions that we want to use to create a new catalog or enrich um, those existing. We might want to use the entities for doing prosopography, gazette use, etc. Um, and uh, in a forthcoming paper, we explored four um, reusing scenarios. We, we felt the need to have concrete uh, cases to better understand what um, what can be done and also um, what editors can do to kind of enable these um, scenarios. And our scenarios are editions data in dictionaries, combining digital editions and gazetteers, detecting intertextuality in drama, um, um, so this is one more towards text analysis and then search multiple data sets with the same authority record, which is the one that I mentioned briefly before. And I will only talk about the reuse of editions data in dictionaries now. Um, so just to clarify, here I'm talking about the reuse of the, uh, the data from the edition in the dictionary and not the other way around. So not the case in which you have an edition and you have a term and you point to explain that term, you point to a dictionary, but the other way around. And if we look at historical dictionaries, uh, for example, in particular at uh, historical digital dictionaries uh, like the um, Oxford English Archive, the Tesoro della Lingua Italiana delle Origini, the Dictionario de Autoridades. Um, it's striking that they only cite um, uh, print editions or prominently. And uh, probably the reasons for this are manifold. Uh, digital editions are not fully integrated in academia in terms of peer review, recognition. We know that we, we constantly talk about it because it's important. There are also some technical reasons, stable referencing, permanent identifiers, the ephemeral temporary nature of web resources. Um, also, uh, the, the difficulty to reference text at the granular level, so this question of, um, that I touched upon a bit before, talking about the APIs of the granularity and, and arriving to the fragment, which is important in the case of dictionaries. 
And for this last um, issue, um, some of the solutions like BTS already offer um, a direction where to look at. So, um, uh, I can, uh, I will use this uh, example, the, the, the example of the data from the Faust edition reused in the goethe Um So, um, the digital goethe book is based on an ongoing retro-digitization of the printed edition of the dictionary, and until recently the references uh, to Goethe's writings cited in the dictionary uh, refer mostly to the Weimarer Ausgabe, and in particular to this edition, to the Weimar Ausgabe in archive.org. So in, in the, um, you'll see, we'll see it better here. So in one, um, in the definition of, of, a, of a word, of a term, you uh, can go to the occurrence of that word uh, in, the, um, in this edition that is uh, available in archive.org. Um, and then uh, recently, uh, in, a paper, in a paper published last year, the curators indicate they're willing to include more citations to digital resources, also to modern digital scholarly editions. This is what they explain here. Um, and uh, so now, uh, what, what is possible, uh, this is the example of the word Faust in the, in the mean, so in the, with the meaning of fist. Um, you can go directly to the verse uh, in the uh, Faust edition, um, the Faust Quran digital, digital edition. So uh, again, in terms of granularity also, it, it changes because before you can only point to a page, and now you can point to the exact, uh, exact verse. Um, and then other cases of editions data we use in dictionaries are, for example, the, um, the uh, document linguistique à uh, used in the Dictionnaire Etymologique de l'Ancien Français, uh, or uh, the um, ONP reader, the Old Norse Prose uh, reader, reused in the Dictionary of Old Norse Prose. What is um, interesting to note here is that um, is, um, uh, uh, I'm lost my slide, my notes. Yeah, is that uh, is not only about the technical issue. Um, the projects, the two projects, the dictionary projects and the and the editions projects, sometimes need to work together. And this is clarified in one of the paper about the French example. This project needs to work together to find the best way to to do it, to combine data, especially to achieve uh, an accurate semantic mapping of the terms. Um, I'll skip on this one to arrive to some conclusions. As, as we said in the beginning, the content of a scholarly edition is a mine of information for many disciplines. Um, and the, the content of a print scholarly edition, um, what is to be found in the text, in the, in the apparatus, in the introduction, in the editorial notes, uh, as it is today, is the result of centuries of dialogue between disciplines. And digital editions, on the contrary, have just started in the last decades to assume this role of crossroads for different disciplines. And the feeling is that this negotiation process, process is still very much ongoing. What's in an edition? Should we enrich the data with linguistic annotation or with some other information? And what, what should we put there that can be reused by others and can be um, useful for others? So in addition to, the, to a potential remediation of content, digital scholarly edition should face the challenge of defining the technical infrastructure to support the use and reuse of data, thus to support the dialogue with others. Based on our analysis, we arrived to suggestions that are very similar to, for example, the conclusion of the surveys uh, by Francini, Teres, and Mahoney, published a couple of years ago about user requirements in the age. The suggestions are to provide the data in multiple formats, so at least XML TI, but also TXT, JSON, RDF, CSV are suitable formats. Provide multiple access to the data, um, API, data dump, single resource download, depending on the different audience, and um, and different real scenarios, implement internal persistent identifiers and enrich data with external persistent identifiers, and of course offer documentation for users to make sense of the data and understand how they have been collected and generated, nothing particularly new. 
To conclude, uh, we hope that the concrete examples of APIs and overuse scenarios presented here might help editors to consider data reuse and how to facilitate it from an early stage of the edition planning. And we believe that enabling reuse means to also to strengthen the pivotal position of scholarly editing at the crossroads of many research fields in the humanities and beyond. And I thank you.